Hey guys, welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Hopefully by now you've seen my video where I compared the sounds of this with Roland's brand new Anthology 1987 VST plugin, which attempts to recreate the sound of this instrument. In this video, we're going to do a review of the plugin. I'll tell you what it can do and what it can't do and some of the limitations compared to the real hardware instrument. I'll also share with you some of my thoughts on this new subscription-based service that Roland are launching, and I'll speculate a little bit with you about why they're calling it the Anthology 1987 and not actually using the word Roland D50 anywhere in the marketing or in the title. It's going to be very interesting, so I think we should get started. Yeah, that of course is the sound of Fantasia and that's not the D50, this is coming from the Anthology plugin. And when you first fire this one up and play Fantasia, it sounds awesome. You are gonna love the sound of this. It is extremely nice to play. And to my ears, it sounds surely really like a D50. Uh, let's come back to the sounds in a second. I've got actually a list of stuff I wanna go through with you starting in order. Right, the more observant of you will have noticed that my D50 isn't on the stand. I'm using a Roland A49 USB MIDI controller, which I guess is the kind of setup that most of you are going to have anyway. Behind me I have the D50 just because. Um, now, I could have used the, the D50 as a MIDI controller, of course, but there is an issue here. I noticed that the plugin doesn't respond to aftertouch. In fact, the notes cut out if you send any aftertouch information to it. So that's why we're using the A49, because it doesn't have any aftertouch. Right, so on first uh, opening, you're obviously going to play Fantasia. It sounds wonderful. It sounds really, really wonderful. I've got to say, I was quite blown away when I played some of these presets the first time. Then I went straight down to 37, which is our soundtrack preset. Let's see if we can find that, there it is. My favorite preset of all time, famously. I cried when I did a video demonstration of this, almost. Let's take a listen. sounds wonderful to me as well. Sounds just like I remember my D50 sounding. This is great so far, all very positive. One thing we really need to understand here is very important. This is a sample library. This isn't an emulation of the D50 itself. You can't tweak any of the linear arithmetic synthesizer parameters. You don't have access to that and you're only going to get the 64 factory presets because that's what they've sampled. Uh, they've done a good job of the sampling, I think. They've sampled the instrument at many different velocity levels to give you some expressiveness, um, but you're pretty much stuck with what they've sampled. Uh, also, if we look at the D50 here, you're probably not going to see it now, but I've shown it on the other videos. There's a joystick here where you can adjust the balance magically between the different partials and get amazing mixes of sounds and really, really atmospheric, characteristic sounds of the D50. You, you can't get that here because it doesn't model the architecture of the synthesizer at all. You're just sort of basically getting a recording of the outputs of the D50 while someone's playing the presets. Um, also, there's a fabulous chase function on the D50, which is one of the characteristic sounds, I think, of the D50, which gives you a lovely delay stereo effect. Well, that's missing as well. Um, what you see on the screen here, which is a very nice GUI, by the way, I think. I love the graphics here. The colors are rather nice and the controls are nice and clear. So top job there. But all of the synthesis controls here, don't be fooled. You might be thinking that this is the the filter that's emulated on the D50 and you're getting access to the internal parameters. No, you're not. This is just a filter that's slapped onto the output 
And same thing for the envelope and the LFO effects. This is just something that belongs to the Concerto sample playback engine. It's kind of interesting, you can switch off the reverb. So obviously they take a different sound. Yeah, no, I don't want to save the preset, uh, discard, it's okay. So I can switch off the reverb. Oh, it still sounds like I'm hearing reverb there, it's strange. Let's get a nice... Switch off the reverb. Yeah, there you go, that's more apparent there. So they've obviously sampled the D50 without the effects switched on, otherwise they wouldn't be able to remove them like that. And then this reverb unit we have down here is their simulation, it's their attempt to recreate the reverb algorithms on the D50. And they've done a pretty good job. It sounds quite nice, I think. Talking of which, if you download this plugin, play the sounds by themselves in isolation, it's going to sound fantastic. If you really just want to listen to the 64 presets of the D50 and enjoy them in all their glory, then this uh, plugin will certainly do the job, I think. Now, as you saw in my previous video, I did an A-B comparison where we played a little bit on the D50 and then immediately after we played exactly the same thing on the plugin. And then you could quite clearly hear, I think, that the D50 had a certain special secret source in the sound that wasn't present in the plugin. There was a certain warmth, a richness, a fullness in the sound and just an excitement. There was a lot of sparkle there that was just lacking in this. This one does sound sterile sterile when you put it up against the original but in most situations that's a kind of artificial test because you're not going to be playing one directly after the other so i would actually say don't worry too much about that yep compared to the original it is lacking a little bit of the magic but on its own in isolation without referencing to the original or in the context of a mix in a song, you are never gonna know the difference. It's gonna sound exactly like a D50. So I have to give the Roland engineers and their um, collaborators here a, a big thumbs up. I think they've done a pretty good job all in all. Okay, I suppose I should show you some of these controls in action. Let me jump to a nice sound for that one then. Let's see if we can find one here that's suitable. And I haven't tried these myself yet. I'm not really all that interested, to be honest, but let's let's check it out. So we can adjust the filter. Off, on, off. There we go. So, uh, I mean, that's quite nice. If you want to uh, automate, perhaps, a build-up during a song. Sounds pretty good actually. It's nice to have a filter there. Um, don't, don't be deceived into thinking this is a Roland D50. This is just part of the sample playback engine. But yeah, it's nice, nice to have. Same for the, let's switch the filter off. Same for the amplitude. Let's play around with that and see what that does. We can adjust the attack. Very cool. What happens if we adjust the release? Some phase. Yeah, it sounds pretty smooth to me. So there you go, you can modify the sound if you want to. What else do we have to play with? Some LFO, I can't be bothered to show you that. Uh, there are some other videos on YouTube if you're interested in those kind of things. So yeah, I have to admit, I was disappointed that this isn't a proper emulation of the D50 algorithms and circuitry and that you can't tweak the parameters. I'd love to be able to load in other sounds as well. I did the Valhalla digital demo recently, which is one of these uh, external memory card things you could plug in with extra, extra patches. Those were quite popular back in the day. But there's no way you can do that here, of course. It doesn't understand any MIDI data or six, SysX data from these patches. It's just a sample library. I hope you understand the difference there. Um, and this, for me, was a great disappointment. Having said that, you know, if you're just a casual person that wants to experience a little bit of the joy of the D50, then I say go for it, especially as it's free of charge right now. You've got absolutely nothing to lose.
with that, I'll hand you back to the other guy. So there you go. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions on this instrument, so please leave a feedback below in the form of a comment. Myself, I find myself feeling slightly anticlimactic about this. I was so blown away and excited when I heard that Roland were re-releasing the D50 as a plug-in. But when it was sample based, I felt that that was a real missed opportunity. You don't get any possibility, of course, to do any editing of the sounds and you're stuck with the samples of the 64 factory patches. I would love to have seen Roland do a recreation, a proper emulation of the D50 with the running the exact same code and modeling the circuitry and so on like they do for some of their analog synthesizers. But for some reason, they decided to go the sample library route. So guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and press the like button. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so, and thank you if you have. Just one final thought about the branding here then. Very interesting, I think, that they're not using the word Roland D50 in the name of this product. The brand, the trademark D50 is legendary, it's iconic, and why have they not used that anywhere in the marketing material or in the title of the product is, is beyond me. It's baffling. And I've thought a little bit about this and I do have a theory. Could it be that Roland are saving D50 for another product that they have coming up in the future? I certainly hope so and it's a very interesting thought. It gives us all a lot of hope. Thanks very much for watching this video guys and I'll see you next time. Cheerio! I said at the start of the video that I give you my opinion on the Roland Cloud. Well, as far as I can tell, the subscription price is $20 per month, and that gives you access to the entire suite of software synthesizers and sample libraries and stuff, which is not a bad price, but for me, it's not worth it. You see, there's only two plugins that I'm interested in. That's the D50 and a Juno, which they haven't even released yet. Um, but I don't use them very often. It's a kind of thing I might use them once a month or a couple of times during a year, so it's not worth it for me to pay $20 every month. I'd rather buy them outright. On the other hand, it's pretty nice that I can just pay a month's subscription, $20, and get access to all of the instruments so that we can do some reviews on the channel. That's pretty nice, I think. Much better than spending hundreds of dollars to uh, buy individual plugins. Now, the other thing then, I did say in the last video when we did the comparison that I invited you to leave comments and I said I'd read some of them out on the video. So let's do that now. And by the way, guys, I got, <laughs> I don't know, 60, 70 comments within 24 hours. So we're not going to do them all. But I picked a few that just seem to sum up the, mu the mood of the community. People seem to be in agreement generally on, on this, uh, this product. So I'll read out just a few here. Let's see, um, Le Kill, I think that's how you say it. The sounds themselves sound really close, but I hear the difference in the effects. I hear a lot more clarity and presence to the reverb on the hardware D50. So maybe for the future, they can improve the effects to make them sound more like the original. But the sounds are pretty damn close, if you ask me. We have another comment here from Wolf and Raven. For the most part, they are somewhat close, but for a few of the instruments, the VST version definitely does not come close to the D50 sound. Some of the sounds feel like flat, whereas the D50 just sounds massive. Yeah, I agree with that. Another one here from Jeff. As soon as you explained that this was just a sample player, not an emulation, everything made sense. The fairly predictable sounds, like Future Pad, are rendered pretty well, but the random, unpredictable sounds and he mentions this instrument here that I don't know how you pronounce it, shakukukukuchi. That's the blowy pipe thing. Lose a lot of their randomness and become less interesting and realistic. Any extra modulation or vibrato also sounds weird and artificial, and yes, it certainly did. Yeah, also that uh, crazy intruder FX patch that just has got loads of stuff going on at kind of random times. That did not work at all as a sample. Okay, John says, I thought the results were rather inconsistent. Some were quite close to the physical keyboard, but some were so far off that it was hard to say that they were the same instrument. Oh, that's harsh. Maybe Roland will fix some of these things over time, and I'm sure they will. That's me, I'm sure they will. Uh, Ensenada says, Roland Cloud sounds great. I wished it sounded exactly the same, but still pretty close to the original sound. One here from Dane, I've just got a couple more to go. 
I'm not picky about emulations, but I'm very disappointed that Roland hasn't made a true LA synthesis based plugin while it sounds possible while it sounds passable. I can imagine it won't be too great with other people's presets being just samples. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. You can't load samples. You can't load your own presets into this thing. Uh, we have one from Diamond Field. Got to say, oh look, this is very positive feedback here. Got to say that this and the 1985, presumably a Juno, sound fantastic. If you are after solid and authentic sounds, essentially presets of these types of instruments, to sit straight into a mix, then they work very well. Was also impressed by the sound of the plug-out VSTs, Pro, Mars, etc. Looking forward to seeing what else they add over time. Yeah, there is a bunch of VSTs that I haven't tried at all, and I guess we need to do that. I'll do that during my free trial period. Okay, now this is the final one here, and this is very uh, exciting. Uh, it's from Chris. And if you want to see it in, uh, there's a few posts here and some links. If you want to see that, then I pin this comment to the top. So it's easy to find. It's from Chris7411. He says, your D50 demo video was what got me excited for this plugin. I did notice the lack of the chase and the joystick functionality, but one of the department heads one of the department heads at Roland mentioned that there was a full function D50 plugin on the roadmap for this year. Okay, and he provides a link, Chris, very helpfully to another video showcasing this uh, anthology plugin where one of the Roland guys has chimed in. I won't say his name, but you can follow the link and, and see for yourself. The Roland guy, if that's what he is, says the following, but this should get you excited. A full simulation of the D50 with full functionality is in our upcoming product lineup for this year at Roland Cloud. So we are offering many different approaches to vintage synths with these different offerings providing many different capabilities. Stay tuned. And on that bombshell.